Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy <coughs> Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you all no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. As she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. 
Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart stopped? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the drop post of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on, my misery, on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. And as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken <coughs> spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. morning we will do in a canticle. I will read the canticle and then you please make the response. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no holy one like you, O Lord, nor any rock like you, O God. For you are a God of knowledge and by our actions are weighed. My heart exalts in the Lord. I rejoice in your salvation. The bolt of the mighty are broken, but the feeble turn on strength. Those who are cold now search for air, but those who are hungry are well fed. The barren woman has borne sevenfold, but she who has many children is forlorn. Both the poor and the rich are of your making. You bring low, and you also exalt. My heart exalts in the Lord. I rejoice in your salvation. You raise up the poor from the dust, and lift the needy from the ash heap. You make them sit with the rulers, and inherit a place of honor. For the pillars of the earth are yours, and on them you have set the world. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. 
And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, when our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our graduate hymn this morning is I Believe in God Almighty. Please stand. <coughs> Beware that no one leads you astray. 
many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, for the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> When I was uh, when I was very young, uh, my first memories, young, you know, what, four or five years old, um, <clears throat> the Apollo uh, space program and things. We had cereal boxes, and on the back you could get like the record that you could play, and it was like the recordings from the spacecraft. And I had a diecast model of like the man and the lunar module kind of attached together. And one of my very first memories was laying in bed, looking out, and I could see the moon. Uh, from my bedroom window, and and as I was looking at the moon, I just watched TV. There were men on the moon walking around that night, and it was pretty cool. Uh, I don't remember Apollo 11, but I, I do remember the later ones in 1972. Um, <clears throat> Why do I find it interesting? I think I found everybody involved in it interesting, because the scientists were brilliant. Uh, they had to invent technology to get there. And what really fascinated me was the astronauts themselves, because I think I would have reacted differently given the same set of circumstances. If you've ever, you've seen the movie with Tom Hanks, Apollo 13. Um, <clears throat> I invite you to please listen to the original recording of Jim Lovell and the rest of them. When an explosion happens in their spacecraft, Jim Lovell says those are moral words, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Houston says, can you say that again? He says, we have a problem. And then he goes on at a voice, at the same pitch of mm -hmm. my voice right now, to kind of relay the fact that everything in the spacecraft is lighting up. You gotta remember, they're in a vacuum, right? Heading away from Earth, a quarter of a million miles away, with no help, uh, their spacecraft just exploded. And Jim Lovell's like, yeah, Houston, we seem to be venting gas of some sort. I can tell you if I was there, how that conversation would go. <laughs> It'd be like, oh my god, what was that? Houston, uh, we just had an explosion. Oh my god, we're venting something in this space. And there would be shrieks and crying and calling for my mother and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Shopping, right? Watching TV, explosion in the spacecraft a million miles from Earth. That's yeah, all the same. Um, but what I really found interesting looking at the, the technology, there's one thing I remember, and it's always, I don't know why this has struck me. Um, they had these course corrections, right? Like, <laughs> this is like in the late 60s, early 70s. <laughs> you gotta remember. remember. Remember cars back then? Every time, in the summertime, you would drive down the road and, and everywhere, you remember this if I say this, there was a car pulled over with a rat. <laughs> right, that never happens anymore, but there was always, especially on a hot day, you know. This is the technology we had to work with. They're going to the moon with this technology. Um, <clears throat> by the way, quick story, this is part of the sermon, I gotta tell you this, because this is so cool. We found out a few years ago that Jack had uh, type one diabetes, right? That his, his pancreas was very soon going to stop producing any insulin whatsoever. And, you know, that affected all of us. It was a confusing time. Uh, and I had been in touch with Charlie Duke, who was one of the guys who walked on the moon during the Apollo 16. He was a Christian, and I was interested in talking to him about his experience. I told him this, and I asked him, you know, could you maybe send an email to my son just to... He sent a video. He like record. He put on one of his NASA shirts and he did a recording for my son, which is these guys are awesome. Anyway, um, <laughs> technology. So when they go out, they circle the moon. As you can tell, no, it's not exact. So they have to do these mid-course corrections. Apollo 13, because of the computer, like the, it was damaged, they had to do it manually. Now, now here's the thing: when you're a quarter of a million miles away from Earth and then you got to come shooting back. 
it's going to be kind of exact. <laughs> right? when, you, when you come back through the atmosphere, uh, I describe it, so it's not like I'm, I know what I'm talking about, but you have to, the angle had to be between like 5.5 and 7 degrees. So, like the thinness of a piece of paper when you're looking at a basketball size further, right? And if you were too shallow, you would literally skip off the atmosphere and then go screaming off into interstellar space. If you were too shallow, you'd burn up coming through the atmosphere. So no pressure, right? <clears throat> they had to get that exact because a tiny deviation of like a quarter of a degree by the moon would be a huge deviation when you find it out first. Why has that always stayed with me? Our belief is like that. Our belief is like that. Have you ever talked to a Christian who has some crazy belief that really doesn't go with the scripture and you're wondering where on earth did you read that if someone's sick and you pray for them they are absolutely going to get better and if they don't it means you didn't pray properly that is exactly what I'm talking about because if you take that belief and you let's say start to believe that at 20 by the time you were 65 or 80 years old, do you know how that will have shaped your life and your all subsequent beliefs? You will be way off course. So I, talking about God, especially reading and studying scripture, memorizing scripture, writing it on your hearts means it's right there all the time. It's the lens through which you see the world. That is so important. I can't, I can say it every week and still it wouldn't be enough of an emphasis on the fact that we need to see the world as Christ saw the world. When we have this story here, people shy away from these readings, right? Apocalyptic readings, there will be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes. People are like, whoa. On a bad day, this is exactly why I don't read this scripture. Jesus is mentioning this. Because what he's telling us is that I don't want you worrying about the end. We all have an end day. And it's not a thousand years in the future. <laughs> you ever thought of this pretty sorry, not once again, not part of the scripture, not part of the sermon, but yeah, we all live in this general area. Most of us spend most of our time in this area. Have you ever considered the thought that you may very well die at one of these intersections that you drive through like 50 times a year? Have you ever thought of that? How weird of a thought that is? Right? That kitchen table that you walk past every day and you prepare your meals on, you might like have a stroke and bounce your head off the corner of that table going down. <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty rude. Huh? <laughs> but it, it's. Our, people think of these existential. Do you know that Congress is talking about UAPs and there might be aliens? Yeah, you ever had the thought that in the next 30 years we're all going to be dead? You ever thought of that? Oh boy, did I kick you every all year went right over the road. <laughs> but it's true. People have these weird existential oh, wars, rumors of wars. Jesus is saying, I don't want you focused on that. I want you focused on everything that happens from this moment until whenever that is. Whether it's tomorrow or a year or 50 years from now, you need to focus on your life in me. And the temple being destroyed is this shift of people used to go to the temple, and when they went into the temple, they were literally entering into the, the, uh, the life of God. Everything inside of them. With the temple destroyed, it's about God's temple and Jesus Christ coming to reside within us. You know, people used to, we don't say it anymore, your body's a temple. We usually said it to get people to stop drinking or smoking, right? I always joke, my body's not a temple, it's a relatively well-maintained Presbyterian youth center. <laughs> <laughs> but your body is a temple that God comes to reside in, to shape you, to shape you. And the importance of prayer and the studying of scripture should be the most important thing you do every day, every day. Every day. Because of that trajectory thing I was speaking about. 
the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the one who will help us to see the world as Christ sees the world, um, <clears throat> is the one that will shape our direction and all subsequent beliefs that come, through, uh, come from these initial beliefs, that we're all brothers and sisters, that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that we should not die, but have eternal life. And so once again, it's a mistake to have the focus be on the end times, the, uh, the apocalypse, uh, death. It, it's not about that. They're mentioned so that we move our focus away from those things and into the day by day by day. Our lives are an opportunity to serve God. To serve God. And when you think about it, you know, you know and I do, I, I do this, right? I think to myself, God, I can't, I can't wait to get home and then really, really waste my time watching YouTube videos. But if I spent my day watching YouTube videos all day, you know, get up late, play video games, you know, life of a 15-year-old boy. Um, <clears throat> the one thing lacking of that is any opportunity to do anything relevant for anyone else. And that's the thing that in your heart, at the end of the day, your head hits the pillow and you think this was a good day. It wasn't a good day because you did nothing. It was a good day because you did a lot. But we always have that fight. The world tells you you need to, you know, do you remember this before you retired? For those of you who are retired, right? I can't wait to retire. And then there's always the fight between people who are retired and people who aren't retired yet. And it's like your brain shifts the day you retire, right? Retired people annoy people who are still working all <laughs> the time. And they annoy them because of the time that they have to do stuff, right? Hey, do you want to come over and, you know, we'll have a barbecue and we'll do this and we'll do that. And what's the first thing you do? I'm working all week, dude. I don't have time for that. And then the person who's working says, I can't wait till I'm retired. And the retired person, six months after retired, saying, I'm so bored. I need to do stuff. Man, I was working 40 hour weeks and it was awesome. And then we look back on the past and your government job behind a desk was the best thing in the world. And when you were doing it, you're like, can I save up enough money to buy a Smith and Wesson and blow my head off because I can't stand this job? Is this resonating with anybody? Because, right? But, in retirement or, or when you're working, it's the opportunity to do good. And sometimes, yeah, it's like working out, right? You go to the gym, you work out, you walk out the door, you look at everybody else in the world differently. You're like, I just worked out, I'm awesome. Look at all these fat people walking to this. <laughs> I just worked out, I'm awesome, right? But when you were going to the gym, you're like, I'm not doing that, I can't. I, hey, what did I spend a hundred bucks on this? I, I'm not, you know what, I go to the gym and I'll sit in the sauna, but I'm not working out, I, I hate this. <clears throat> but once you start, you feel fantastic. You're better than everyone else, right? But all, all to say, our emotions just mess us around all the time. The most important thing in the world is to serve God. And when you do that, everything will feel right. But it's getting over the humps of of, uh, I'm too tired, I don't have time, I'm working, I want to do this instead, I want to do that. But when you do those things, that peace that only God can grant will come upon you and reside in your heart. And that is everything. It's everything. So remember, you are the temple, and it's the temple that God himself wants to reside in. When I said Smith and Wesson, I didn't. I meant Glock. Right? Sorry. <laughs>
Together, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of the people, by your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. By your agony in the garden, by your cross and passion, by your death and burial, by your resurrection and ascension, and by the gift of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die and on the day of your glory, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. In moments when our suffering seems too much to bear, remind us that you are our strength and our peace to endure. For those who are sick and seek your healing, Lord, especially Audrey, Beth, Bobby, Diana, Rosie, Edwin, Emily, Grace, Greg, that have requested prayer today, Margaret and David. Deliver us from war and violence, from hardship of heart, and from contempt of your love and your promises. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Enlighten our lives with your word, that in it we may find our way and our hope. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Hear Assist your people in every land, govern them in peace and justice, defend them from the enemies of life. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear Gather your people, Lord, and teach them your word. Give us people to love, hands to hold, and arms to lift others as we offer support to one another. Bless the families in this parish, especially Linda Stevenson, Gloria Stewart, and Jennifer Hannes-Sapetic. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Hear My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. Welcome sinners and invite them to his table. Let us confess our sins with confidence in God and give them. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have done undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved Confirm 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. <coughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. morning is God who's giving knows no end. <coughs>
for consecration. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now gather in our prayers and praises as one will we praise our Savior God.
baptized Christians, regardless of your home church or your denomination, you're all welcome to receive here the Eucharist at St. Thomas. Also, we're, we'll be starting our prayer ministry in the prayer note to the side. You pray for yourself or for others for wholeness or healing. Completely confidential. I invite you, if you have something in your heart, to, to, to share in prayer.
Gracious God, in this sacrament we have shared the body and blood of Christ. May we who have been nourished by holy things bear witness to his life and share in his eternal priesthood, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power and work in us and the gift of the living Lord and the past are Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. As you go forward through the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. <coughs> Children, parents, teenagers, well, one of our teenagers is being a marion, and we would really, really encourage you to get involved in this pageant for this week. It's beautiful and it's fantastic. So we have the next few weeks we're going to be talking about, today we talked about angels. Next week we'll talk about the shepherds. The next week we'll talk about the nativity, and then the wise men came after that. And then on the 15th, that's when we put on the whole pageant. So we will be practicing. Um, 
all of the announcements that are that, that are uh, that's really important, and they're all, all important. They're right here for your focus. I'd ask you to take a moment, hang on to them as they as they come due. And I know Bonnie wanted to speak to you about the bazaar coming up November 30th. That's uh, two weeks from yesterday. And the side up sheets are, are in the narthex. So there are still a number of, of positions and, and duties to be fulfilled. So if you please consider um, signing up for something and being part of that that very special event. It's going to be a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of work. And uh, just looking forward to a great event as we always do. And the um, in effect is uh, happening on Wednesday, November 20th. That's the Advent Book Study with with Sally Cannon, 2, 2 p.m. in the sanctuary. And again, uh, candy donation, donations are still being accepted for your parade of lights, right, Sherry? Yes. Yes. And if you'd like to help fill candy bags, come to the council room on November 26th from 10 until noon. And we need extra lights for our folks in the parade of lights as well. And now, well, the heat and candy actually this Tuesday is it's in the front of the bulletin. This Tuesday, not the following Tuesday. And okay. So Okay, did everybody hear that? Everybody hear that? Yes? Well, okay, the Fern and Frank uh, Men's Group is having the annual dinner at the uh, Irish Hills on December 5th, so contact William for that. William, where are you? There, there he is. If you want to like, like to come to that, that'd be an awesome event. And the ECW luncheon is, is being held at the Mandarin in Canada on Monday, December 2nd at 12 noon. And uh, Diane, where are you? There's the lady to talk to, ladies, if you want to attend that, that terrific event. Sign up sheet in the narthex. Thank you very much. Sign up sheet in the narthex. Okay, all the rest of your announcements are there for you. Morning prayer continues up Wednesday at 10 a.m. Thank you.
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.